Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back, and we are joined tonight by Survivor Ghost Island winner Wendell Holland. Yes, yes. He's our he's actually the first survivor we're having who's going to recap with us. Normally, all of the survivors come on and they do our predictions and power rankings with us. But Wendell gets to come on. He gets the easy job of recapping. Dom had the tough job this weekend of trying to predict the merge boot. Um, but Wendell, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you on here. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this will be fun. This was an exciting episode. You got, you know, you got a really that was an intense merge episode. Not as good as the Noble boot. Not that good. That this was a good. really, really fun. This was a really, really fun boot. I uh, I enjoyed watching it. I thought that something else was going to happen tonight, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it wasn't super predictable that Elizabeth would go home, despite. You know, in retrospect, me thinking that that was a logical vote, even for some of the Davids. Yeah. And what do you think I, was going to happen, Wendell? What was your anticipated vote tonight? Oh, um, I was at a watch party tonight with um, a bunch of fans, and I was thinking, like, I was thinking they were going to target Dan. Dan was going to pull out his idol. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe Carl was going to pull a nullifier out or something like that. Um, but you know, we saw we saw Elizabeth go and. And we saw Angelina making a lot of moves, moving and shaking. Yeah, that's that's the Angelina thing. And we, me, Alexa and I were both saying Angelina's going home, merge boot. We've been saying that since before the season. As this was happening, I was like, it's going to happen. But I think what we saw tonight is everyone was against Elizabeth. This was something that had been going on for a long time. It was a little bit hidden by the edit because even last week – you know, she was kind of shown as being on the outside and then and then all of a sudden she's she's dragging this log and really nobody's defending her. Nobody was really on her side. So I think this was building for a while, but I thought they did an excellent job of making it so that this was a 12-1 vote. Yeah. And I never like I still was sitting there watching this tribal going, Angelina's gonna go home. It's gonna happen. They're gonna flip it. It's going to happen. And I, I you know, that's that's impressive when the editors can pull something like that. Yeah, if you think about it, um it seems like uh even the Dave is like with her beefing with uh, Carl and Davey last week. It's like, all right, that's an easier target um, for the Davids. And you want, I guess, in Survivor, you kind of want to be able to just focus on an easy target at the merge because things could get sloppy. And um, obviously all the Goliaths will pick her off. Although the, the whole Christian thing, when they were thinking about Christian, um, Angelina pointing the target at Christian, it's like, that's a big move. He's a smart, very likable guy. And I'm like, man, that would really shake some things up. Yeah. I almost feel like she probably should have been able to pull that off easier. She's just doesn't have a good read on how tight the rest of these Goliaths are with some of these, these Davids. And I think the six person Alliance that started to take shape tonight, I'm thinking that six is going to ride through for a little bit here. I think tonight things went according to their plan. This Nick, Allison, Christian, Gabby, um, and who are the who are the other? Mike and I'm missing one, and Alec um, and Alec. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of blindness on this whole Goliath Strong thing, which really wasn't talked about much tonight. But I think because the vote went against a data a David, Angelina and a couple others will think okay, well, we got rid of a David, so this Goliath thing is still going great, but I think that's really just an undertone to actual alliances like John being tied to Christian and Dan being tied to Christian. And Alec is also a brochacho, which I didn't realize until they yelled that when he jumped off the boat. So there's still a lot, a lot of social politics going on here just beyond David versus Goliath. I totally agree with that. It was cool to see that new alliance forming and it's like it's crossing the tribal lines or whatever it's um it's something that it's kind of something that we had with the me and dom laurel and jonathan thing um and it's a, a covert kind of alliance right now that i think will have some legs later on and i, and I, I think, think it was smart for them to take the the easy vote tonight so that you know down the line they could do make some noise well, and, and like they said, by getting rid of Elizabeth tonight, the, now the Goliaths still aren't woken up to the entire thing. The, the, Eli the Goliaths like John and Dan and Kara, who aren't in on this six-person alliance, they're still blind to it. 
and you can get rid of another David next week, like a Carl, like a Davey, who I don't think are going. We didn't even hear from David tonight, but I don't think either of them go next week. I think these idols and idol fires are going to come into play. We can get rid of another David next week that's not Gabby, Christian, or Nick, and the Goliaths will still think, wow, everything's going fantastic for us. Then the next week is when a Goliath gets their their knees cut out from them, and then that's when it's like, oh my God, yeah. we were we were blinded by this six person alliance the entire time. Yeah, that's when to do it when you kind of have more of a critical mass, and it's it's just they won't be able to regroup at that point. Yeah, exactly. So so what I was going to say too is when when you look at the the four person alliance you had last season at least from a viewer's perspective, and maybe it wasn't the feeling on the island for some people, but from a viewer's perspective, you and Dom had a clear upper hand in that four-person alliance. It was it was the two of you, and not saying that you guys were dictating it, but just from who could win out of the four of you, it seemed like you and Dom were the ones who were getting most of the respect from the players who were going to get votes at the end, which, is, and which ends up being what happens when you sit next to Laurel. This six-person alliance, though, I don't know who really sticks out as the big dominant, oh God, they're going to beat us ten nothing kind of person. Uh, maybe a maybe a Christian, mm -hmm. um, but everyone has a compelling case. Like even Alec tonight, I started looking at him, and with all that went on before the season, I'm like, I'm just waiting for him to you know show his behind or whatever. But mm -hmm. as I'm watching him, I'm like, yo, this guy, he's he's making moves, and like yeah, Survivor always talks about make a big move or whatever. It's like him crossing tribal lines and reaching out to and you know getting in this alliance that's like that's a, a good survivor move and to have the 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 common sense to not make the move now as somebody who really wants to make the move we saw him with the itchy trigger finger when they got rid of Natalia now he's kind of taking a step back and he's like all right I don't have it yet I need to make I need to wait and and we got we got a text from intern and everybody who listens to intern he said hottest take Alec is the winner and the Instagram thing was a marketing stunt so everybody take what you will from that one I know you got a comment for that don't you so that <laughs> it's crazy I thought I thought Alec was pre-merge when all that mm -hmm. stuff came out I thought um, him and Kara uh, mm -hmm. were pre-merge but then I, as I see him him going Listen, intern, that would be that would be a brilliant marketing stunt. Like if he's the winner, then it's like, what, what is what is the survivor world going to do? How are they going to cut this man? How are they really going to cut him out? So it's like that is uh, that's that's tricky and funny. And uh, it sounds pretty brilliant if you ask me. And it, it would be one of those things. Let's say let's say that happens. Right. Now it's one of those things where anything goes with Survivor. Now you can't now like and the editors are messing with us a little bit this season. They really are. And they've they've taken some things into consideration that maybe we weren't expecting or that fans have been complaining about for a while now, especially after 35 and 36 back to back and 34 even before that. So they're taking some things and, and they're mixing it up on us. And how crazy would it be if like this pre game thing comes out and now you don't know what to believe then it really is like you have no idea anymore who's getting winners at it who's not somebody who posts something pre-game is all of a sudden the winner like you, anything goes yeah it's it's dope i i like that he would be or whoever is the mastermind behind posting that photo it's like it's brilliant he's a true game changer he'd be on game changers too <laughs> <There it is. laughs> um yeah that's like that it's dope and it's like all things are out the window i remember a time when they said survivors can't even like post. i think bryce bryce is with me um ladies and gentlemen hey bryce hi bryce so <laughs> I, I remember a time where um survivors couldn't even like instagram or tweet or follow each other or follow each other but yeah. on our season man when we got off the island i think and i think that also happened that helped spoil our season as far as who was going to be on it but we all followed each other on social media but for a couple of us mm -hmm. and as you know social media becomes more prominent and all these things and as we're more interactive things like that will happen with with alec and yeah he might go real far in this game and that might just yeah like he's like listen survivor gods i went this far in the game i'm gonna tweet this photo and you guys can't do anything about it mm -hmm. That's kind of crazy. And that's what's so weird. There's, and I, I don't want, like, obviously we don't want to go too far into this, but I think what's confused us is what is the precedent? What can you do and what can't you do? And Phil and I also thought he was going to be the first person to go home, but mm. 
when you actually sit down and think about it, that wouldn't make any sense because everyone likes him. He's done pretty well in challenges. And he's probably the first person I, who comes to mind when I think of this merge who really wanted to shake things up. And to Phil's point, he's been smart enough to know to kind of sit on it a little bit. So mm -hmm. who knows how far he'll go. And if, if he turns out to be this winner, I am really curious to see how this turns out. That would be awesome. I actually, at one point, I thought he was going to be the merge boot. Mm -hmm. because he like in the first of all he did that that vote where he got out um natalia early he made he kind of went against the goliath in doing that and also you see him in all the challenges he's he's performing well and so he's this strong guy who's already gone against the goliath he could have been a common enemy and i thought yeah so early on i was thinking it might be him but uh, and let me ask you do you think because you you you've played with a lot of different types of people. I mean, you played with Sebastian, you played with Chris, and then you also played with somebody like Kellen and somebody like Donathan. And do you think that people might almost think Alec is a little bit of just a, I don't know the nice way to put this, but kind of an idiot. Like he's just the surfer bro. He's having a good time. He's all muscle. Don't worry about him. He's got no strategy. And I know he flipped on Natalia, but do you still think that there may be like, he doesn't really have much game. He's doing it for the, for the, the show especially amongst the Goliath tribe, they're all very smart. Mm -hmm. um, and for them to look at this like surfer bro kind of dude, maybe almost like a Devin. Mm -hmm. um, Devin, he kind of turned it on late, late in his game too, except for when he didn't practice making fire or whatever he did. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think people might look at him as just some kind of bro that's not playing too hard up here. He's just physically playing a hard game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he could definitely use that to his advantage. Yeah. And, and when I look at when I look at him right now, I expected to not really like him coming into the season. I, I, I really was. And it was even without the TMZ stuff. Just looking at this guy, you're like, he's on the Goliath tribe because he's a 25 year old bartender. Like, whoa, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, no, like I know 25 year old bartenders. None of them are Goliaths in life. And, and some of them have the jawline of Alec. So so when I look at this, I'm like, OK, why is he there? And I'm thinking like, he's just going to be so over the top. He's not going to be great. He's, he's going to be just that guy who's there and he goes, you know, late pre-merge, early merge. He doesn't really have much of an impact, but the edit this guy is getting is so positive. It's so positive. And tonight we had the whispering around the merge feast. It was Alec. It was Alec. And C drunk Carl is MVP of all time. He is the, drunk. Carl is the man. Drunk Carl is the winner. <laughs> but, but, you know, I look at that and it's like, people know, and still his name didn't come up today. Angelina was somebody that was being considered more than him. And, or Dan is somebody who was being considered more than him. Like Alec is still okay. Yeah. He's still, he's still, he's still cruising. And I guess he, he has impressed me. I looked at him as a bro, even, yeah. I looked at him as somebody that's just one of these guys that are just out there, but he's playing. And I almost feel like he, if he was on my season, he would have been one of those guys to really shake things up amongst like a me and Dan, uh, a me and Dom alliance, because like he's willing to kind of like reach across the aisle or whatever, reach across um, the tribes and make those moves that you know not everyone is willing to make. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, and I think that he's somebody who's aggressive, but he's not as outwardly aggressive as Angelina. Angelina is in everybody's face with it. That's she, the problem. She, yeah, she can't turn it off. She's awesome. Like, I love watching her, you know? Mm -hmm. But And I love what's going on up here. Like, the moves that she's thinking about, they're great moves. Get rid of Christian. He's so likable. When he talks, everyone he draws everyone in. Everyone laughs at him. He has all these bro, um, this bro chachos that love him. It's like, yeah, it's a great move to get rid of a Christian right now. But you got to kind of massage that move into – like, you can't just – like, the way – her tact, the way she goes at it is just like – you got to chill a little bit, homegirl. You got to take it easy. I think that's it. When you said her her tact, that's probably like the word that I've been missing since the season started. I think she is so incredibly smart and she's very good at this game. And I'm loving this like villain role that she's taken on. But I think that's it. I think she comes in kind of hot with her ideas. And honestly, they're the right ideas. Christian very well should go home. But... I think the way that they're being presented and she doesn't have the information that he and John and Dan are tight, but the way that she's going about it is probably off putting to those two because they actually do have a connection to him probably more so than they do to her. 
Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, it's um, like she's barking orders as opposed to, like if, if you want a Christian to go home, if you're her, you wanna kinda like have a conversation about it as opposed to saying, Christian's the threat because he's the linchpin and he's the smartest and he's the um, keystone to that whole operation. No, you wanna say, hey guys, who's who's super smart over amongst the Davids? Like who is, you 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 make a conversation where whereas they kind of bring up, oh my goodness, Christian is this guy that is in the fold with a lot of people that everyone loves. He has charisma that you would have never assumed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, she it's like, she kind of goes in it with more so of a, a drill sergeant or a barking orders type of mentality. Well, and and it's the way that it's the way that everybody knew how her reaction was going to be while she was reacting away from them. How Dan knew it was infuriating her and how John had to go and walk with her. It's how everybody knew what was coming from Angelina. And I think look, Angelina is somebody, I think she's very much like Sarah. She plays a second time she could win the game. She could run it the whole entire time. But this first time is a learning experience for her. Because in her real life, she's used to being in that control role and she's able to get things to go the way she wants. And in this game, she's everybody else has the exact same strong personality and they want it to go their way. And I think that she needs to, once she sees this, she's going to say, oh my God, if I would have just sat on my hands there. Because look, I look at this, Angelina's not going to win. She's a great villain, but she's not going to win this season really. So, so when you sit there and you watch it, she's got to be saying to herself, man, if I would have just let that go, if I didn't push Christian, or like you said, bring it up as a conversation. Make them think it's their idea. Don't tell them. And then don't be mad when all of a sudden you're being bum-rushed. Her words were bum-rushed by everybody. Like, you're not being bum-rushed. Your alliance is just telling you that, look, this is what's going on right now. Yeah, they're like they're telling her how it is, and they're telling her a little bit about herself. Mm -hmm. um, Bryce, Bryce told me that uh, – he would take an Angelina to the end. But then we were having the conversation like, and you said Angelina can't win. But I'm like, man, she's got a lot going on up here. Mm -hmm. If she gets to the end with the right people, she could at least, she could, if she can say it the right way, it's like, look guys, the threats were X, Y, and Z. I was saying it from the beginning. Now I'm sitting across from Christian who I said at the merge was a threat. And so like, I think I'm almost thinking uh, what I'm thinking is, and I don't want this season to be predictable at all, but like now it's like, what, seven Goliaths and five Davids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They could feasibly like Pagong the rest of the Davids, which mm -hmm. would suck. And then I think they'd get Angelina out of there because it's like, all right, you're, you've, sh I don't know. You think she don't know that by now, though? Like it, it, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think you're, I think if Angelina gets there, I think it's near impossible for her to get there. If Angelina does get to final three, final two, whatever it is, I think she can win because she's very well spoken. She's very persuasive and she's Could playing win. a hard game. I think it's, she's got to get there, which probably won't happen. Won't happen. No. But I think if she does, it could happen. And I think, I think another thing that really hurts Angelina, and I think she could almost get fish boxed, where she's so confident in herself and knows what she did but gets really bum rushed by somebody who knows her weaknesses. Cause mm -hmm. that's what JT did. He knew all of Steven's weaknesses and knew how to get everybody on that jury to say, look, I'm the good guy. He's the bad guy. And yeah. I feel like if she's sitting next to somebody like John or like Dan, or especially with the way this jury is now where everybody just kind of talks over each other, somebody can just say, look, Angelina was so mad at us. She was so mad because we wanted to get rid of Elizabeth and she insisted it was Christian, but she was so angry with us. And I think that somebody could point to her weakness and kind of throw her off her game and have her get too emotional. And I always remember the fish pot kind of like throwing his hands up being like, what do you mean? Like he, he wanted to strangle JT because he was just so caught off guard by it. And I think that's something that somebody could do to Angelina. if yeah. she were. Especially if you sit next to somebody likable. Yeah. Like Christian. Or yeah. really anybody on this cast. Everybody's pretty likable. I don't think you're going to be pretty villain. John. John, yeah. He surprised, he surprised me so much this season. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a wrestling fan growing up. You know, I haven't been a wrestling fan in like two decades, but I'm thinking this guy's going to come out here and just be this, you know, whatever. Whatever mm -hmm. you would assume. A wrestler. Yeah, yeah, a wrestler. And even the first episode, I'm like, all right, he's still kind of like, oh, this big, whatever. But then watching him, I'm like, I like this guy. Yeah. And as huge of a person he is, it's like, 
he's been kind of playing as be as below the radar as he can play, and he's he's likable. He's giant. He's smart. That that's almost a recipe for a merge boot too. But he he's found found a way to keep some of the heat off of him. And and I will say with what I find with John and and you know you're sitting across from us and you'll probably say this is ridiculous. But he, the comparison is the way he speaks almost is how you would speak when you were out there. It's it's very like calm. It's not it's not aggressive. And you look at this guy and you think he's going to be so aggressive. You think that he's going to look at him and he's talking about his gains and how he's got a hundred thousand calories on this table and he's so excited that he has that. But like every time he's saying it, he's so, he's so soft spoken that it's it's you're not as threatened by him as somebody like Rodney, who Rodney's running around and he's this huge strong guy and he just can't stop talking and he he's he's abrasive. And, you know, Rodney's not a bad guy, but he's abrasive. And John's just not abrasive. And it, it's really shocked me how how calm and, you know, I don't want to say well-spoken, but how just calm he is, his demeanor the entire game. He hasn't – I don't feel like his blood pressure has gone up. That's crazy. I never uh, I never would have thought of comparing him to me. But now that mm -hmm. you say that, I'm like, wow, he is – He's just he's cool, calm, and collect collective. What? How did Rod? Yeah, yeah, cool, calm, collective. You exactly. were a feature in a WWE wrestling. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I tr I tell you, I used to love that stuff, man. But um, yeah, he's he's very calm, and it seems like although he, I mean, he's been winning a lot. He hasn't mm -hmm. had to make a lot of uh, tough decisions. But this guy is like, I'm impressed at his like cool demeanor for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so so when you look at these, when you look at the uh, the Goliaths now, we've talked a lot about Angelina, but when you look at some of these other Goliaths, like Dan and Kara finally reunite, and it's the most emotional moment in TV oh, history. Man. Yeah, oh, it's, my God. it's so adorable. <laughs> I mean, we've needed this. Honestly. You know, Tyson crying over Marissa, eat your heart out, because this is way, 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 way <laughs> more powerful. Or Rachel, I'm sorry, I called her Marissa. Oh, my God. No, no Tyson no. yelled at Marissa. He yelled at Marissa. But, but, loving, but loving Rachel, like, no, this is so much more romantic. This is so meaningful. But, like, you look at that pair, and everybody knows that it's a pair, and I think Elizabeth was spot on with it tonight, and I think that even though Elizabeth went home, the first jury member sometimes sets the tone of how the rest of the season is going to go. And I think that Elizabeth going home by showing her even noticing that Dan and Kara were super tight and she goes home, I think it lets you know that everybody else is noticing this too. And I think that that's where the Goliaths are going to kind of start to eat themselves is because they start to realize these people are just too close together. And you look at Mike White, he's not a Goliath seven. Like he's, he's not running around going Goliaths, Goliath. Like he, he's probably more of a kindred spirit with these, with these Davids. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, the whole Dan and Kara thing. What did uh what did Jeremy say? Dan's in a showman's and Kara's in a strategy or something? What in an alliance, I think. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it almost seems like that's still the case. It's like he he gets back and he runs right to her and he tells her that he has an another idol. That is so bonkers stupid. that he does. So that. stupid. It's like this guy, he's he's he man he doesn't know how to play survivor mm -hmm. this guy doesn't know how to play survivor but and he has all of these tools right now but it's like man you just need to shut your mouth a little bit you know and she is licking her chops in her conventional where she's like dan has two idols we're and good in love with me yeah. it's crazy and and what's gonna happen wendell right if if Dan decides if he finds out that he, he's on the bottom or him and Kara are going to go home, they're going to try to target one of them. He'll play an idol for him, play an idol for Kara. Carl plays the nullifier on Dan. Dan goes home. You know, it, 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 you know, you can see it happening because he's got the two idols. He's like, me and Kara are so protected. Nothing can go wrong, even though he's the one who's having a panic attack when his name gets thrown out there. And Kara's like, would you just calm down? But it's it's funny that you can kind of see that happening and him not even realizing. And it's not really his fault because we've never seen an idol nullifier but just how blinded he is by Kara and good for Kara, whatever she did good for you being like Dan's exact type, like well done because it's working for you. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. She drew a, she drew a great hand. Yeah, she She's really going to outlast him out there. You would think, I mean, it would have, it would take something really crazy for her to not outlast him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so when I look at like the rest of the Goliaths and, and they're saying seven to five, I don't think that they're gonna pick off the Davids. I know you had said that that could be boring and they could pick on them. But you have Davy with an idol, Carl with an idol nullifier. Even though tonight a David went home, this went totally 
the way the Davids wanted it to go too. Nobody wanted to play with Elizabeth. And I'm curious to see like what it was in the exit press that really set people off about Elizabeth. I'm sure we'll see in Ponderosa when that starts coming up, but I, I, I'm I'm wondering when the move is going to happen. I'm wondering why Davy and Carl were so okay with this move because I know Carl was tired of Elizabeth, but why, I wanted to hear more from Davy tonight because I wanted to hear why is he so okay with losing another number? Who does he feel comfortable with that he thinks he's going to be able to pull to his side to somehow even this up? Yeah, that's a good question. My my thought is um, merge the merge. Let's let's get an easy vote. She's mm -hmm. been. Uh, Elizabeth, from Davy's perspective, Elizabeth has kind of been tripping on us about the whole shelter thing and her back and whatnot. They they got into it. Um, if anyone is to vote against us, maybe it will be Elizabeth flipping or something. All right, we'll work with them right here and and just get the easy vote and last an extra three days on this island. You never know what happens next. I have an idol in my pocket, so at least I, if I use it right, have an extra three days on top of that. Um, and he doesn't know about Carl's nullifier, right? We don't Dom know. Has more knowledge. Yeah, Dom we had an. We are okay. not from Davy tonight. Literally yeah. nothing. Nothing. And, and Dom had an interesting point in the in the predictions. He said he thinks that Davy and Carl have told each other about what they have. He thinks they have. Now I don't know, but that's what Dom seemed to think. And I thought that you know that's it's kind of interesting. I mean, it wouldn't be completely out of the realm of possibility that Davy that Davy already knows that Carl has a nullifier. But the way Carl's kind of playing, I mean, until tonight, Carl's been playing a really quiet game. And then tonight he drinks a little bit. And all of a sudden he's spewing everybody's secrets. So I wonder if maybe he slipped up there too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I we would know because this idol nullifier is so brand new. I feel like every time this is brought up in any conversation, we as viewers would know what's going on. Just because it's, it's new and not that the rules are sketchy, but we've just never seen it been played before. So we don't know how it really works but yeah and if carl, carl was pretty drunk so maybe he's yeah. talking about it and if he yeah we would have i fit um i feel like we would have seen it because like if i roll up on you and i'm like yo i got an idol nullifier what's up <laughs> it's like come on You're, there's gonna be a conversation like come on there's no such thing as an idol nullifier and then like there will be big reactions i think so maybe we would we would have seen it had there been that conversation i don't know well, if you got an idol nullifier and your closest and, and Dom had an idol, would you tell him? No, no. The yeah. only reason why I told him I had an idol was at the merge. I thought we were about both about to have to blow up our idols just to get Chris Noble out. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I didn't want to tell anyone about anything. So, <laughs> and and if I had an advantage like that, no. I until I'd absolutely have to. You gotta keep you gotta keep these things secret. Yeah, mm. and but, Carl's a yeah. Carl's a big fan. You know, he's a he's a really big fan, and I think that he knows that this is a one time only thing. If it happened, it happened on Ghost Island, and he doesn't know that because he didn't watch it. He knows nobody else knows that it would have happened there either. So he's got to be sitting there going, "I'm the only person in the history of Survivor at this point to know that this exists." Even I can't tell anybody. You can't tell Davy really ever unless it's coming up where. You know, it's about to be okay. What happens if Dan and Kara both play an idol for each other? And it's like, don't worry about it, man, because I have this. You yeah. know, that's the only time you would do it because you're about to use it anyway. And if and if he tells Dave, it all depends on who tells who first, also. Because if he tells Davey that he has a nullifier, Davey shouldn't tell him that he has an idol. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, here, this is, I have your kryptonite right now. You know, it's like, yeah, you. So, or if Davey tells him that he has the idol, then he's like, all right, well, I have your kryptonite. So mm -hmm. just thanks for that info. So either one of them, if one of them shares it, I think it would be best for them to keep keep their mouth shut. I and just it's detrimental to both of to both of them to tell the other person about mm -hmm. what they have. And and right now, like what's interesting is Davy is in such a more typical survivor situation because he, you know, people tell each other about idols all the time. Like you told Dom, Dom told you, blah, blah, blah. And and I think that. Davey at some point probably does tell Carl. Carl has no incentive to ever tell anyone about what he has. Because with that idol nullifier, that I honestly think might be more powerful than an idol if you know who's about to play an idol. Because you're, you don't have to tell anybody you have it. You don't need to get the votes the right way. It just needs to come down to it's going to be Dan or it's going to be me. 
Dan is going to get all the votes. He's going to play an idol. Oh, no, I'm going home. Well, too bad. Here's the idol nullifier. Like, you don't have to tell anyone. Whereas with an idol, you almost have to tell people so they have to figure out if they split votes. And what. Like, there's so much more to that. The idol nullifier, you could just keep to yourself the entire time. It seems more powerful than an idol if played right, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. If played right, yeah. it's more powerful than an idol, straight up. This yeah. is like it's like having a super idol. Or it's something that we've never seen, and it's, and it's most powerful. And I feel like with someone like Dan in the game, with two idols, it's a it's a perfect it's like a perfect setup because Dan isn't playing the most strategic game, mm -hmm. but he has these two idols. It's like, all right, I'm gonna hit a home run and get get him out of here with a nullifier. It's it's that's the setup. Yeah, and I think it was like a foreshadow tonight where Kara says Dan needs to just be calm. He's got two idols. He's living the survivor dream right now. It could be so much worse. I feel like that's a – we're going to play that at the reunion. Here's a clip. And it's Kara saying it could be so much worse. You know, 18th person voted or whatever. You know, 14th person voted out of survivor is Dan. And he goes out with two idols in his pocket or whatever. Like that could be it got worse. Yeah, it got worse. And then there's Jeff sitting there smiling as he leans over his stool and everybody's sitting up there in the, <laughs> at the reunion laughing at Dan. You know, yeah. I, I could see it. I really could. Yeah. I could too. <laughs> um, all right. Well, who else? Who else? We, we didn't talk about Allison, who wins the immunity challenge tonight. And here's somebody who's, whose screen time has just like picked up, skyrocketed, skyrocketed. She didn't do much all that much early in the game. And then right before the merge, she's bonding with Gabby, which I think after seeing tonight, I think her and Gabby are definitely going to have something going here. I don't think this is a David versus Goliath thing. And then, you know, tonight she had she has a lot of confessionals. She was the one who got the the opening confessional about the uh about the the merge and all of that. And I said at the beginning, and I, I, I said when they were supposedly the Matt blow up at the beginning where she was talking about, you know, I'm a David, I should be a David. Supposedly that was much worse. And the fact that it was wasn't shown as that bad, I was like, maybe that means she goes really, really far. And starting to see this uptick in screen time. I wouldn't be surprised if she's somebody who sits there at final three with a, with a pretty good, you know, story of how she got there. You could, you could be right. Um, from my perspective, um, mm -hmm. and also again, being a, a Goliath, I, I see, I see as much as I want to see the Davids go far, I, I see Goliaths getting a little far farther, but, um, mm -hmm. with her, when she won this first um, individual immunity challenge, at the merge, she reminded me of Kellen. Um, mm -hmm. Kellen came out and out of nowhere, I believe, won ours, but mm -hmm. that made us scared of Kellen. So it's like, it's like, man, yeah, she's getting an uptick in in um, in minutes and uh, in confessionals, but now she's kind of she's kind of on the radar, if you ask me. So that's and another way. Yeah, we also have to announce that she hugged Jeff. That's a big deal, which of course oh, Alexa. Yeah, that about. is like why haven't we? We're we, we didn't mention forty-two minutes in, and we haven't talked about this. We were distracted by Wendell. Wendell, you you came in tonight. If you weren't here, that would have been the first thing we would have said. We just said Allison hug Jeff. Like that's the biggest deal of all time for our podcast. So, okay. but but I will say with with on your season, and and it probably is the edit, and you were there, so you know more, but. It seems like there's more threats than Allison on the season, whereas Kellen comes on everybody's radar. But then again, there weren't as many people to have on your radar. There was a lot of people who were kind of just riding under the, you know, under the radar. And with this one, Allison wins, but you still have John. You still have Christian. You still have Everyone. Dan with, with Idol. Every single person who's left in the game. Is a still reason such why, a yeah, you can name a reason why everyone's a threat. I'm looking at my list. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And for so many reasons. Even down to like, like, like the Carl with the nullifier, or or like Mike and I don't know. There are there are reasons why you can say people are threats out there, you know. Whereas with my season, it seemed like pre-merge they got rid of a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, exactly. Hi Bryce. Yeah, hi Bryce. I just I just sent out the uh, I just retweeted what Bryce just sent. He's watching it. And there he is. <laughs> Get involved, Bryce. He's he's there. <laughs> um, Get out of here, guys. <laughs> this is Wendell's show. Yeah. Well, we will bring. We got it. We got it. We got to talk to Bryce. Now we got. Now we got to communicate with Bryce on the outside here. I um, have a question for you guys. We've kind of hopped around each person, and I know I'm kind of hijacking the conversation. But back when we were talking about Angelina, and I, I'm, I know how I feel about it. And I'm pretty sure what you guys are going to say. Talk to me about how you think 
this whole Angelina and Elizabeth running off into the woods conversation went. When I, I was at I the, <laughs> I mean, when I was at the watch party, I looked at everyone. And I said, "She's trying to get her vote. She's trying to get. Mm -hmm. She's setting her up to the But she does. It's the the T word again. She. It's like she doesn't have that tact. And and I was talking to Bryce. I was talking to Bryce about this earlier, <laughs> and he said that another way to do it is going up to her and saying, "Hey, look, the target's on your back. People are thinking about you, and let's find. Let's figure out a way." To get this target off your back not saying hey you're going home peace bruh it's that's that's not the way to do it it's like if you want it seems disingenuous almost it seems mm -hmm. kind of like <laughs> it seems kind of like the whole um the the jacket gate situation mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's clear that the only reason why you were giving that fake hug to um natalie was because you wanted the jacket and that's the only reason why you wrote lyrics name down yeah. so if you find it's just you gotta you just gotta be a little smoother with it you know and i think that's the thing sorry i'm dying because well, Bryce no, just, things if, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know if you i'm assuming you've seen forgetting sarah marshall right like when uh right is forgetting sarah marshall where every time that he calls in to bill Hader, his wife is just always like kind of off screen like whispering to him and then she'll just like <laughs> pop her head onto screen uh but, <laughs> forgetting sarah marshall have you seen that of course. Yeah, he saw it. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. my wife, right? Now get off the screen. <laughs> Leave me alone, wife. Wendell, you, first of all, you got to see Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Great movie. Wait, Wendell, but, you know Forgetting Sarah Marshall? I what? haven't seen it. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not, Put Bryce on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want me off of this because I because you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a great movie. It's hilarious. It's like Jason Siegel's coming out party. But anyway, um, okay, so what you're talking about with that, yes. What I think is so telling of Angelina is I think Angelina said this at some point at tribal where she said, people know that she's being real or something like that. Or she says she's being real. I forget exactly what the words were. Everybody knows she's being really fake. Like it's so transparent. I mean, it came out with jacket gate. You showed three people who are still left in the game that you're not sincere. And then this happens tonight. And the way that she acted around the entire Elizabeth thing, where it was, this was bad form for you. And she was so down on it. I can't believe you would call me out like this. To me, it's like Angelina probably feels like she won tonight, but she didn't win. And, and I, I compare this a lot to what happened with Adam and Taylor back in Millennials vs. Gen X. And Taylor really could have blown up Adam's game. And Adam was on the defensive, and it was with the food. Did you eat the food? I didn't eat the food. And he was losing his mind. The difference was Adam was really close with everybody and had shown himself to be loyal to these people. Angelina hasn't. And in that situation, Taylor was just so far on the outside. Elizabeth here was very far on the outside, but... I feel like there's people who still respected Elizabeth and her work ethic and her style and all of that. I feel like that's there. It's just that the smart move was get rid of her. Angelina seeing this as a victory and it really is not a victory. Nah, it's, it's just, it's like, it's her being the, it's Angelina being the Angelina that everyone has seen. And it's not, it's, it's not, it's like, we know you're the, you're this kind of survivor player right now. Like you're you're kind of shady and you you you're making moves and and it's like you don't know how to you don't know how to be smooth making the moves or or mm -hmm. the likability just isn't all the way there. And mm -hmm. like we said before, in her head these moves sound great, but it's just the execution that's a little lacking she's playing with a lot of really good players too. And I think that she's not expecting, I think she thinks she's smarter than a lot of people. And it's the whole thing we were talking about with Alec earlier. And you were saying with John, you weren't expecting John to be like he is. I think Allison is so reserved that maybe, yeah, she's a doctor, but you're not, you might not expect it from her still. Cause she's so reserved. Mike white always sounds like he's about to break down crying. So you're not, you're not expecting it from these people. These are very, very smart people. And I think all of them are saying, you know what? Angelina, do what you have to do. Go ahead. We'll let you take the reins. But when they come hunting for us, which they're going to, you saw Gabby tonight, and I loved, I thought Gabby was great tonight. We haven't really talked about her at all, but she was great tonight, breaking down crying, being like, what do you want us to do? Just sit here and take it? When they're coming for somebody, they're coming for you. And, and that's not a position you want to be in. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. And I, I feel like when they, when they come for an Angelina, it's going to kind of be an easy target. 
Whereas mm -hmm. when you come for other people, it might be more difficult based on people's alliances or like ability or whatever. When they come for her, it's like, bye bye. Yeah. yeah. I, totally I have a question. Agree. Yeah. Let's hear it. Um, Elizabeth chose to blow things up at tribal council. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, as I mean, she told the other Davids that they were going for her, right? <laughs> but she didn't blow things up with the Goliaths until tribal. So mm -hmm. I feel like everyone was already on the Elizabeth page walking into tribal. And at tribal, it's not always easy to change votes. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is maybe should she have should she have done some more groundwork or decide to blow things up at camp with the Goliaths? Like as far as Angelina goes, like, hey, look, Angelina came to me and told told me your whole plan. Because at tribal, it's 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 a little tough to get up and start whispering and change everything. Yeah, it's a it's a bomb, but that bomb isn't as effective, I don't think. I feel like that bomb is ineffective unless she blows it up and then whips out an <laughs> idol and is like <laughs> He said nothing to me, but he was reenacting a tribal. He's the Alec of our podcast. That's it. Because Alec gets up every time. Alec gets up every yeah, he time. Does. He does. Oh my god! That's I, I don't I don't need I don't have my train of thought. I just I just uh, keep talking back and forth. Um, oh, if she if she had an idol, if she wants to walk in, blow the whole thing up, and then drops an idol and says, "You guys got to figure it out." Great play. But I think she told Gabby what Angelina did, and Gabby was like, "Yeah, sucks." And then Gabby voted her out. And so I just think Elizabeth didn't really lay the groundwork. And here's here's what I'll say. Let's say that this happens to Christian. Christian has an in with Dan and John. Let's say this happens to Gabby. She has an in with Allison. If this happens to Carl, maybe he doesn't have much of an in, but he was doing some work. He was talking to Alec. He was talking to some people about how Elizabeth needs to go. Davey, we didn't see much from him, but we know that him and Kara have talked a lot. Elizabeth didn't have a go-to person on the Goliath side. And maybe she only needed to flip one to get the number seven, six, but she didn't have somebody that she was really close to that she could go to. So I think that she probably should have done a little more work before going to tribal, but I feel like this goes all the way back to, to the merge, to before the merge, to all that. She didn't have somebody who she was super, super tight with that she could say, look, this is what Angelina did to me. She's despicable. you got to get rid of her. Yeah, that's true. You know? I mean, a last ditch effort could be just, I mean, you don't want to make large proclamations in front of everyone, but like, mm -hmm. but in the game of Survivor, you, you have to talk to every single, you always check in. Like it's one of the top rules. You always got to check in with everybody. She didn't lay any groundwork, but in scramble mode, Hey, start pulling people mm -hmm. one by one, but don't think that you can go into a tribal, drop a bomb and that will necessarily you know, shatter things because it's it's very difficult to do. There's your there's your advice from a survivor winner, everybody who's listening to this. That's yeah. that's fantastic yeah. advice right there. We'll, we'll get you sixty percent of the way there. But listen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, and I think I think that's that's a good point. I also think that this was a little editing on their part. I do believe that Angelina telling Elizabeth also this was such a this was like a, hey, princess, I have an apple for you. Like, I felt like this was like the Snow White thing where it was just like Angelina creeping in the woods. Like, it's just so weird. But anyway, like, I think this happened right before Tribal Council. I feel like there was no time. I feel like that's when Angelina did it to, like you said, get the vote. She wants the vote. And you don't have enough time to go back and scramble yeah. now. But hey, like, and I think that's maybe why she was able to go back to her Davids because her Davids were still sitting around or maybe the Goliaths were off doing their own thing, about to get ready to go to tribal, and she didn't have much time to actually blow things up. I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although I don't know what she could have done. Look, I don't think – Elizabeth put her best foot forward tonight, but I don't think that she ever actually had a chance to get past this vote. I don't think she had any chance at all, even if she does get to the Goliaths earlier, even if all that happens. You have too many smart people. I look at that group of six, and I'm, I'm just going to keep referring to that group of six as like the core alliance right now. But I look at them, and none of them are – they're all really smart and they all realize that the best thing for their game is Elizabeth to go home right now, not Angelina to go home right now. Like, like that's really what the best thing for every single player in that Alliance. That's the best thing for all of them. So get rid of Elizabeth, let everybody like everybody's happy, move on. And 
you know, just kind of start from scratch next time and, and hope that these alliances that you've kind of worked out work. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And I think that this, um, man, I'm, I'm just very excited to see this new six work together. Mm -hmm. I like seeing like cross tribal alliances and whatnot. And, um, these, they, they don't like, they're not the epitome of Goliath. They all kind of look, it's Nick, Allison, Gabby, Mike, Christian, Alec. They, they could, I mean, except for Allison, she's, but like these guys don't look like your typical Goliath, whereas you got some big, strong, intimidating, threatening people on the other side. So it'll be cool to see how this six works against those people. And, and it's a terrible season, but it kind of reminds me no, of the Fiji. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Fiji, um, where, where you had Boo and Earl and Yao Man. And like you had this, this group that was just so unexpected. If you would have sat down at the beginning of that season and said, this is going to be your final six, you would have said, there is no way in hell this is going to be my final. Dreams, Cassandra, Yao Man, Boo. That's five of your – like what are you talking about? That's crazy. And – that's the feeling I got when I looked at this group. And I like, hey, I like the people on the other side. I think Davey is awesome. I think Carl is Carl is so much fun in the weirdest way. I don't know if we've had a character like Carl in a really, really long time. He's, he's so, so old. He's school. so blunt. Yeah, he's very yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And he could yeah. jump very high. Yeah, and he could jump very – that was insane, man. He could yeah. jump into a basketball hoop. That was insane. <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, when I look, when I look at this – I. I, I like the people on the other side, but this six is just so unexpected. I mean, to me, that would just be such a satisfying final six. But also, it would be nice if that's not the final six because I don't want to know at final 13 that that's going to be the final six. I'd like to see them work together and then around eight or nine, see Davey pull out an idol and say bye. You know, I'd like to see something like that happen because at the end of the day, is Christian going to win this season? I don't think so. I don't think he can get there. So, you know, I'd like to see a little bit of drama before we get to just six. I thought it was really odd that we didn't hear from Davey tonight. And I'm glad you brought him up because I, I kind of forgot about him for a minute because yeah, he has an idol and yeah, I guess that wasn't really relevant right now, but he and Elizabeth were like super at each other's throats last episode. And now we, I think he's the only person we didn't have a confessional from or like we didn't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. with. And I think it was weird that he was kind of the focal point of the issue with Elizabeth last episode and we didn't hear anything from here tonight. So I don't know if he's going to be laying low for a little bit and then coming out. I, I really, what do you guys think is going to happen with Davey? I, I don't know, man. I, I like him personally. He's, I'm, he seems you awesome. know, you have, I'm rooting for you this guy. Watch parties? Is that, have I seen that? Yeah, Did I went to two of his watch parties and like, I, I like this guy and I'm rooting for him. I'm just trying to figure out what his path is, you know, and I, I don't, it's like, I don't, I don't know right now. I'm glad. And Bryce, clearly Bryce knows who I'm talking about. He's rooting for him too. It's like, he has the idol, which is good. He's, I don't know. Bryce is trying to distract me. He, he's doing a good job. Anything. Hi, yeah. I'm about to bung guard. Yeah, we haven't seen baby. Oh no! Oh, that, oh no! Wait, get, put the put the things back in. Uh, oh, oh my bad, they Maybe. fell out. Yeah. Do this here real quick. Right. Hey, guys. hop in. Hi, Bryce. How are you? Hi, Hi Bryce. How are you? Let's hear what you got. Let's hear what you got. Sorry. So I just got the feeling we were talking about Davy, and I think Davy has a great chance. I don't feel like we've seen Davy enough, which is also in Survivor World. Great, like he has enough of a track record that he made the merge. And we don't know where he's gonna go from here. He's got Uncle Carl with him. Mm -hmm. He's got Gabby, he's got Christian. Christian has Alec. Christian also has John. Like that's like, whoo, get mm -hmm. me a little hot and bothered <laughs> to see what Davey can do tonight. So I, I mean, I'm also, you know, so Davey's definitely is somebody I have my eye on, but, and then last thing real quick, cause sorry, I mean to bun rush this cause I know it's supposed to be window night, but listen, I'm here. <laughs> Angelina real quick. And we could just rewind to Angelina. I didn't like Angelina the way that she was playing, but tonight I got a different perspective on her and the event that like, I appreciated the way that she approached Elizabeth 
AKA bro, bro. Um, mm-hmm. And kind of like let her know. And the way that Elizabeth went about everything to me just uh, completely turned me off. So I got my eye on Angelina, AKA Tomb Raider. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, hey y'all. Hey, Chris, before you go, what yes. are your thoughts on Davy driving a PT cruiser? Talk, <gasps> talk to me. Oh, 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 oh. I need to hear this. But wait, have you seen his PT Cruiser? No, <laughs> no, no, I would love to. That's absolutely that. Who? That's a hundred percent true. I could see him, and it's purple with tenant rooms and like flames to the side. <laughs> no, it doesn't have flames on the side. And no, a hundred percent purple with flames on the side. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's wonderful. I I'll, need to see this thing. I'll send y'all photos, <laughs> but. I'll give you Win Dizzle back. I'm sorry, guys. I just had to jump in real quick. No, that's totally fine. This, this podcast is sponsored by Bryce. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> long as you know. As long <laughs> as you know. Hold on. Here's Wendell back. All right, good. <laughs> See, you never know what you're going to get with this man. He didn't tell. See. Wendell, we're going to have Bryce come on one yeah. time for his own show, and we expect you to just come, like, flying through I'll, the window. I'll do like, that. When he's I want on, the Instagram stories just flying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll throw water balloons at him and stuff. He's not going to He's not gonna get through it. And and, and so so to bring it back to Davey, as, as where yeah, we were, speaking here's, of. here's what I'll say about David and I. I don't think Davey's doomed. And normally having a bad merge episode in terms of edit normally means you're, you're, you're in trouble because you're just not going to win the game of Survivor. But – Tonight's story didn't really involve Davey. I think that's just what it comes down to. Davey wasn't the one who was ratting out Alec. He wasn't the one who had was in danger. He wasn't somebody who fell into this six-person alliance. And his idol never came up. And it was just Elizabeth going home, who he was fine with Elizabeth going home. There was so much else going on and so much drama around so many other people that it was really hard to get Davey into the story. So I don't think he's doomed. I just think that because there's 13 people, somebody's probably going to be left out. And we know Davey. We know where Davey stands on a lot of this. So I think that this was an okay time to be left out. I think next week you'll see him get a little bit of an uptick because now Elizabeth's gone and now he's got to start playing the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I had some, I think before the merge, I had some quiet episodes too and um, Mm -hmm. things turned out pretty well for me. Um, (laughs) But yeah, but in this season, you have a lot of you have a lot, a lot of big personalities still in it. Big players, big smart players, giants, and you have forty three minutes to tell a story that ends up with someone going home. So it's like, how do we? What's what's the path that we take to tell this person's story? And yeah, Davy wasn't involved tonight, but I hope he starts. I hope I hope they show. I think there will be an uptick in his in his uh, time on the show. Yeah, Davey kind of reminds me a little bit of um, a little bit of Eric Reichenbach back in um, back in fans uh, both fans' favorites because really Eric Reichenbach played the same game twice. Where he kind of is, he's stuck in the middle, and he hasn't he hasn't found a really tight ally that he can move forward with who also has some type of control and other people. He's just kind of navigating it right now, and I don't think Davey's in any sort of trouble right now because he is likable and he is kind of playing under the radar, but. It just feels like he hasn't made that personal connection. He's not anybody's bro Chacho right now. How tight he, do you think he is with Carl? I would say that they're probably the tightest, but we haven't seen much of them. We really haven't seen too much of them interacting. Yeah, I think we, it's like an assumed close alliance. Because they voted together, or they voted together the first time to get Jessica, or they voted together the first time when Jessica wasn't voted out of the game. They were both against um, Pat, so they, they, you know, or they were both with Pat, not against Pat. But this was stuff that was coming up at the beginning. And then once they got to the other tribe, the smaller tribe, Carl was over at Exile. Carl comes back from Exile. And we didn't really see them interact too much about Elizabeth. We just kind of heard their thoughts on what was going on with Elizabeth. We saw Carl talking to Kara. And we saw Davey kind of just talking to Elizabeth. So I I, I think they're tight, but I I haven't seen like a Dom Wendell type. Here's what I will say. Mm -hmm. Me and Laurel were very tight before Mm -hmm. they showed me and Laurel being very tight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like super tight straight yeah. up and um yeah like we were tight we had all these conversations that weren't shown mm-hmm. we knew and yeah i know they showed a lot of laurel saying all right it's now it's time for me to make a move on wendell it it didn't happen but like 
we were tight before the show showed it. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe Davey and Carl have something and an idol and a nullifier in a close alliance could be, that could be something, although we don't know what yeah. the alliance really is yet. That could be epic if yeah. that happens. You're probably right. You're, you, yeah, I would say, I would say you're probably right. There's probably more to it, but it, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's a little weird. I mean, I guess Eric was really tight with Brenda the second time or the second time he played that, that I think was his closest ally was Brenda. And we didn't see much of that either. And then he kind of just fell, you know, he fell and whatever happened to him is low blood pressure, whatever that got him medevaced. But, you know, I, I just feel like Davey's playing a game that's going to have, he's going to have a really cool moment in there. There's going to be something really epic that happens, but I don't feel like it's going to end on the high note that people are going to want by the time it comes around for him to get voted out. Sadly, I feel the same way. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause I think he's, I think he's a really likable guy. And I think right now people might be like, Oh, there's other characters that we know a little bit better than him. But as this goes on, you're going to come to know Davey a little bit more because he's got the idol and you know, it's going to come into play. This nullifier, all these things are going to come into play at some point. So by the time that he goes home, it's going to be like, dang, I, I really wanted him to win. He's going to get the the Devin uptick or something like that where you go, man, why did he why did he have to fall just short? I still want him to win. Yeah, I, I, hey, I get it. I get <laughs> I'm it. I, I'm so afraid he's going to like lose the fire making challenge in the uh, like where like he's going to get there and everyone's going to want it. And I I don't know. I don't want that to happen, but I feel like that's what's coming. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully we're all wrong. We could be. We yeah, could. not not to put a gigantic bias on this podcast. There we are. <laughs> but I I, I want to ask you guys then about about one person that we really haven't talked about much at all, even though we've mentioned his name a lot. But where's your, what are your feelings on Nick right now? Like, what do you think his where his game is? What was that last? Time? Where was he tonight? He was around a little bit. He was there at the beginning more than the end. Yeah. It's um well, first of all, Nick was my winner pick. Okay. Um, and. It's it's like, man, it's almost like we're seeing a couple of these Davies just like almost waiting to die out there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sad to say, but um, like, I don't know, Nick. I feel like he's good. He's he still has his Mason Dixon alliance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he's amongst this. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I I heard him. What <laughs> I am. The, the Mason Dixon Alliance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> All right. So, but, but Nick is amongst this, this new emerging six, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, if he, if he just, I, I think, I think it's still good enough for him to sit a little bit and uh, continue to fill people out. Cause he was on a serious chopping block early, like first episode or second episode or something. Yeah. First episode, they wanted him gone and pack hurts his back. Yeah, so um, I think he's he's done well at talking to people, mm -hmm. and I think this new alliance is really going to help him. And and I think what's interesting about the alliance, the way that it's shaped up, is you know as soon as this as soon as this episode started, uh, they get together and, and Nick and Christian run away, and you're the Dixon of my Mason, or you're the Mason, of my whatever the line was. That, that was a little too romantic for me. It's it's so yeah, it's more <laughs> romantic than Karen Dan getting back together. But you have you have this happen, and. and what I think was interesting about the six person alliance is these are the relationships we saw and the way Nick was so easily able to say, okay, Christian, you know, Alex coming to you, Christian brings up Gabby easily. Gabby brings up Allison easily. Nick brings up Mike white and nobody's like, Oh, you guys are so tight. It's just, I have a good feeling about Mike. And if you look at this six person alliance, I don't think people are looking at Nick as much of a threat and he might have the best, he might actually have a, a three person alliance in, in that alliance, you know? And I know that Christian and Gabby are very tight and there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. And if somehow that was the final six, I think Alec is your sixth place finisher because I think that everybody else just has somebody close with them. And, but what I think would happen is Nick would be too smart to take Christian to the end with him, but he would want to take Mike white to the end with him. And I think that that is a way that he can really make this work for him with, with this group. So then, so first of all, I was going to ask this, but you already put um, Christian out of that final three with a Nick. If Nick and Christian sit next to each other at final tribal, I'd love to watch the debate, first of mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see that. But suppose, 
hypothetically, this final six is the final six. And let's say Nick and Mike go to the end. Who can we put in there? Uh, Al, not an Allison. Gabby, Gabby, not an Alec. Because, yeah. Because, because now. <laughs> I would say, you know what, though? I would say if it's going to be Mike and it's going to be Nick, I would say Gabby. Pro Gabby or Allison would be the one who sneaks in because Christian, they would be too smart to keep around. Yeah. And I think that what it would probably come down to is one of them would win. Let's say, let's say, it, actually, in that final four, I have no idea who wins that last immunity. That could go to any of those. If you're looking at Allison, Gabby, Nick, and Mike White, like that could be anybody. Who knows but at that but, point? But Mike White. What, what was that? I can't see Mike White. I think that's got to go, and this is just strictly based on my minimal knowledge. That's got to go to Allison or Nick. Yeah. And so let's say Allison wins it, right? And she takes Mike White with her because, look, Mike White's the person you probably think of the best chance of beating out of that Final Four because that's somebody who already has – he's been successful. People know his face. They're maybe more inclined to not give him the money at, at the Final Three. And so you take him with you, and you have Nick versus Gabby, and Nick gets in. Nick wins the fire making, and it's Allison, Nick, and Mike White. I think that's an insanely interesting final three. I think that's a really interesting one because I don't think you have a GOAT because I think Mike White will get some votes there. But I, I also would love to hear what each of them says is the best thing they've done or what the worst thing – and I know we're so far out. We're still you know nine votes from that happening. But that to me would be such an interesting final three. And even if Gabby were to sneak in there with, with that mix, I feel like that's such an even group of four, whereas – Christian would probably win in a landslide just because he's so liked by everybody. And then Alec is somebody who I feel like if Alec somehow got to the final three, people might respect him, but people also might be turned off by him at that point because he would have to make a lot of moves to get there. So that other four though, man, that's a really even four in my estimation. Yeah. This is an interesting six right here. It's mm -hmm. go ahead, as you No, it's it's a weird six. I this is kind of strange just a little bit. How do you guys think Gabby did tonight? I liked her. I like Little Gabby. Um, <laughs> she's she's reminding. There's something that reminds her, reminds me of Kellen with Gabby. I said that to Phil a couple weeks ago. Because yeah, um, yeah, Gabby. <laughs> thing, that's it. Telling her crying a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I don't love that, but. She's an Aubrey. Bryce says she's an Aubrey. Okay. Yeah, but who's the Michelle to her Aubrey then? Would it be Allison? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if she gets. The winner pick is Allison. Please keep going. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. What what was Gabby doing tonight? I have. I can go back to my notes. She. She was chilling. She was upset. <laughs> no, she said she had a conversation with somebody, right? No, that's it. <laughs> no, she, she did. She was talking a lot to she was talking a lot to the other Davids about they they expect us to just roll over and die. And mm -hmm. what I think is interesting about this with with Gabby being the one who's saying this, we're seeing the frustration a lot. Gabby's not crying because she misses home. Gabby's crying because she's frustrated a lot. And I think there's a big difference there. The frustration, you know, like when Lisa Welch was crying all the time, a lot of these tears were just coming from, like, I'm in over my head. And this isn't from that. This is from a, a sense of I'm so tired of being on the bottom. And, like, Lisa really was on the bottom in her season. She was always kind of in the mix. And so when I look at Gabby right now and I see her crying from the frustration here, the fact that I think the Davids at some point are going to be able to turn this on the Goliaths and it's not going to be 7-5 – I think that this is a positive edit for her tonight. I think things did go well for her tonight because this is almost like the 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 rah rah moment before things actually go down. This is the rah rah knowing that Elizabeth's going home. Gabby even votes for Elizabeth, but trying to get everybody on your side and say, "Look, like we can't just roll over and die here," and and kind of getting that in people's heads already before things are before things really hit the fan. It's great to say and. I think we started off this conversation with me saying that there could be a Paganging, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I, ho I hope that that's the case because as a, as a viewer, that's what we want to see. We want to see some, we want to see them make some cool moves. And um, yeah, I, I hope that what they're showing, they're showing her do, doing that to start getting the ball rolling as opposed to mm -hmm. 
just to hyping up us to think that the ball is about to get moving. And and another thing on this, and I don't think this should be missed, and Gamer Girl actually sent us in a comment, so I'm going to read this one real quick. Does anyone else think that there was an advantage near the you've merged sign? And we had Gabby kind of having her panic moment of, I feel like there should be something here. I feel like there should. And they kept focusing on that. And that did look like a piece of paper you could have kind of just peeled off. And, and what what is your take on that, Wendell, like as somebody who has seen things on the island? <laughs> yeah. Well, ev- what I – just always assume is everyone is always looking for idols or something. Your eyes are always out there looking. And at a time like a reward or a merge or whatever, you you would think that you would think that something is there. When we were at ours, Chris Noble found a piece mm-hmm. of paper in his new buff. Do you remember what the sign said? Everything you need is right here. Everything you and need for the merge and is and here. It's like blatant. It said, and more, and I think there was like an ellipsis at the end or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, like she, someone should have like snatched that sign or something like that. I feel like she was under the right assumptions to think that something would be out there. Did anyone find anything? Or is someone going to get back to, is, is someone going to find something mm-hmm. in a bag of theirs or something later? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But like with Chris Noble, we all had our, we, like our buffs we're all sitting at, at the table placements, right? And apparently his note was in his buff, mm-hmm. but he didn't get his note. He didn't understand a note was in there until we were all back at camp. Oh my God. <laughs> There's no, yeah. Uh, so it's like, although everything could have been laid out there, might there be something that pops up down the line? I don't know. Were they able to take food back? Might there be something in one of the bowls or something? Because we took a lot of food back from the merge. Mm-hmm. There, there should have been something there. Although there's there's a lot of uh, goodies out there already. Three yeah, idols so- and one nullifier. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably, I mean, I don't know. Do we think there's another another idol floating around or it's going to happen after one is played? They'll have I one think, at the merge. I think they will. And kind of going back to like how blatant that sign was, like everything you need and more. That is just way too clear. And the fact that Gabby talked about it, that I can't imagine that's just where this is left off. Remember when Dan found his first idol mm-hmm. and how everyone was looking and he already had it and how they yeah. did that cool editing? Mm-hmm. Maybe someone found something. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool too, especially if it goes across episodes, because that's something we really haven't seen on Survivor before. And I think that would be a lot of fun if you sit down and, and you know, this week they keep zooming in on that, they keep zooming in on that. And then all of a sudden next week in the previously on Survivor, you see that sign and it's like, oh, there's got to be an idol around here. They're running around looking for it. And there's Christian or Gabby sitting there going, yeah, well, I have it in my hand. I peeled this off of the box and here it is. And it says... That could be something really cool because they were they were real. I mean, they they must have shown that shot what three or four times, and they just kept showing that piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the editors are doing great this this time around. So they really are. You, yeah, uh, great. Yeah, we can. Maybe they're gonna do something cool like that again. Yeah. Um. So so we don't really talk about challenges too much, Wendell. But but this was a new one. This was different, and and. This was kind of cool. I, I like this. I thought this was a fun, a fun little challenge. I thought it was fun to watch. It was different than it was moving. That's what was nice about it. It was actually moving. Um, and what I thought was cool too is the idol itself was so secondary. Everybody was losing because they kept bumping into it, but the idol is they're focusing on that, but they shouldn't have been. Right. Um, what what do you think? Like if you're doing this challenge, if this was something you had to do, you know, or if this was on Ghost Island, who's somebody who you think would have just like pulled this out, like would have done this nonsense so well? Because Allison is not somebody I would have expected to be your first immunity challenge winner. Yeah, I think um, I think a Chelsea might have done mm-hmm. it well. Um, despite her edit, we were scared of Chelsea out there. Like mm-hmm. she she could like with the balancing um, challenges or something that you had to stay focused. She was a beast at those things, and she seemed to like know a lot about Survivor. And even no past con, con, um, contestants. So she was a scary player. And I think at something like that, she would be very good at it. Do you know what kind of Dr. Allison is? I don't, but Wendell, you kind of just answered, you kind of gave my answer for me. I think Chelsea and Allison, like at immediate first glance, I could see them both doing pretty well in this challenge. Because I mean, you can make all the assumptions that like 
Allison as a doctor. Like she's probably very good with her hands. She's probably very sturdy, probably very balanced emotionally and physically. She's just has a fairly like athletic and strong build. I feel like Allison was made for that challenge. Yeah. yeah. She's um, I think Bryce just said from the bathroom that she's an anesthesiologist or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. So she's yeah. Got pressure. Yeah. So like, I would I would say Chelsea number one from my season, and mm -hmm. I could see an Allison pulling this one off. Mm -hmm. know, and she did. Yeah, I um I don't know. I just I like this challenge, and I thought it was I thought it was you know this is this is a fun challenge that anybody can win, and I I like that when it's something that really anybody can you know this isn't favoring the women with smaller feet, and this isn't favoring the men with bigger muscles. This is favor. This is just anybody's game. Can you focus? Can you do it? And you know it reminded me of the. Uh, you versus Dom last, uh, right? You versus Dom when you guys were talking to each other the entire time. Yeah. Am I getting that? Yeah. 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 You know, so like, like that's like kind of a challenge where like, it's just going to come down to who can last the longest. And, and, you know, this was, this was different. This was really fun. I thought this was pretty unique. And, uh, you know, I'm curious to see if Allison starts pulling out a lot of these wins, if they start to be like, wait a second, if everything's going to involve some sort of balance and some sort of physical strength, Allison's probably the most well-rounded out of everybody out there, male or female. Yeah, she is. That's a, and that's what you start thinking about, like with these Survivor games. Yeah, sometimes we got we lucked up, and that one was like a bicep bicep curl. Me and Dom just standing there, mm -hmm. and everyone was out within the first like twelve minutes. We lasted forty-five minutes, mm -hmm. and we we're just talking ish to each other the whole <laughs> time, you know. And actually. Um, Lynn Spillman, who has moved on from Survivor, she was out there for that challenge. And we were kind of like, I guess, playing it up because Lynn, this woman that, you know, is like a mother to us, was out there. That, that was awesome. But like Survivor has these weird carnival type challenges that anyone can win, and which is awesome. But it also makes you think of other people as threats. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, man. I'm kind of, I'm pretty athletic and I, I'm thinking I'm going to go on these immunity runs and this, that, and the third. I get out there. Kellen wins the first one. Chelsea wins one. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. these people are scaring me now. So they're on my radar. And I don't know, like let Allison pull another immunity win off and people are going to really take note of that. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, it's funny because you look somebody like John and you look at somebody like Alec and Dan, you have those three guys still left in the game. They're huge. Those are huge dudes. And they're not threatening. They're really not. I mean, you know, John lasted a pretty long time and, and, you know, I think Dan did all right. I mean, but n none of them were going to win that challenge. They didn't have an advantage over anybody else in that challenge. This isn't the days of Colby just running circles around everybody back in Australia. This is really like, it's anybody's game. And, you know, I looked at the challenge and this was a good challenge. I thought it was fun to watch. I thought it was interesting, but you know, it's, it's tailor made for somebody like Allison who has the strength and the balance is just well-rounded and hope uh, not hopefully, but you would think that people would start to be like, wait a second, is she actually going to be that good at these challenges the entire time? Because like you said, I could see her winning the next one too. If it's something similar to that, yeah. stand on a perch and hold the ball or something, you know, like that's something she could, win every time yeah um all right alexa so we have to talk about this and and we didn't give it nearly enough credit yet but but so since we're talking about allison she she literally hugs jeff wendell and i don't think you understand how, that, how big of a deal that is on our podcast i i screamed when it happened it i like literally jumped off my couch like you, it's <laughs> it's the biggest moment for us because we were so close to getting rid of it and then troy Zan and aubrey like attacked jeff and I don't know if I don't remember who's done it since, but it's such a big deal when that happens. So when Allison did that, it was a uh, there was an audible gasp. So Alexa, I, I like Allison you. is a gigantic fan of the Survivor Specialist, and That's apparently, so apparently someone on Twitter has been impersonating her the entire time uh, because she and Gabby recently tweeted out her correct Twitter handle, and so I will be harassing her on the internet <laughs> as proof that she is a fan of ours. But yeah, she hugs Jeff, and it was awesome, and. It's like, and but at the same time, like I don't want to take it away from us, but like, if you, if, like, I don't know, if I got on the show and if I had the opportunity, I would like hug Jeff whenever I had the chance. Mm -hmm. But maybe did it's I, because I would be getting I, points for it. I did know. I tweet at the wrong Twitter handle? 
Um, stand by. You guys talk. I, I think I did, but Wendell, no, anyways, no, so, you get, no, that's the right one. It okay. sounds like you guys feel the same type of way. I see on Reddit all the time. They comment about um, when people give the immunity back to Jeff and they're like, temporarily. Oh, I hate that. It's so it's obnoxious. It's like, it's like, how was your dinner? Oh, I hated it. And they hand yeah. back an empty plate. Like, yeah, oh, like, stop. You could tell I, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you do that on your season at all, Wendell? No, nah, come on now. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I, you're, I be, you're better than that. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, Alexa and I both went to the U, so we have swagger. And, and you know, we watched you do the the immunity, the uh, fire making challenge, and that was like swagger to the max. So I would hope that somebody with that level of swagger doesn't doesn't do that. But I, I went on a rant earlier this season about how I think it was I think it was Allison who said it, and I was like, oh my god, my head's going to, like I can't take it right. anymore. And like. I think you know, it was, Jeff, I'll be getting it back. I think last week Jeff said it. It was Jeff who actually said, oh, just temporary, huh? And I was like, no, Jeff, don't egg them on. Stop. Yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah. Like, so what, I mean, if you're going to joke about it, can't there be like another, if you're going to say anything at all, like, can't we make something new up or anything? Anything. But anything. I think I didn't ever say it. Well, I've, I had immunity a couple of times. I don't think I said it because. Man, I'm 34 years old and life has humbled me, you know, and I went out there on Survivor like I'm not going to get overly confident or cocky mm -hmm. about anything out here. That's mm -hmm. all that was. And people said I was I was cool. I was chill out there. Man, I was just grateful to be out there and mm -hmm. trying to stay humble and focus on the, the end goal. You know, that's yeah. all that was. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's we we do a prop bet game before the season where every a lot of our fans will will put in their prop bets and so the hug Jeff has been in there and we've been talking about getting rid of it for seasons because we had talked about We're it. We're never think, getting rid of it. I think Will had started it back in when, when it was second chance and then we did it and nobody hugged Jeff and then thirty two nobody hugged Jeff and it was like God maybe we should just get rid of it and we kept it around for the one more time in in 34 and we had troy zan who was like the first one and then we had aubrey just destroy jeff and it was like the biggest deal ever so that's our pitch if you ever go back on survivor again wendell please hug jeff i'll be hug hugging him so him a lot. many times there you go exactly. what about homegirl that kissed him at the reunion oh so, was that sarah oh at the reunion well i in after she was voted out what was her name dawson, that was dawson and like like yeah. a million years ago after yeah. she got voted out that yeah. was weird that was, was before awesome. we were podcasting so she kissed him but i feel like at the reunion she ran up on him and tongued him down oh wow really that's the dream i truly think that that's what happened but I do uh, i'm gonna have to do like some extreme him. internet googling for that one where's <laughs> but, intern when you need him yeah I what? <laughs> probably right. asleep <laughs> We're gonna. I'll, I'll text intern and tell him to look this up. But yeah, that's like another level. Like hugging Jeff is nothing in comparison to the the like the cheek kiss and then Jeff's uncomfortable face afterwards is the no. best part. He's just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So if I go back, I'm I'm giving him a nice cheek kiss. I'll tell you that. Yeah, give him there a nice smooch on the cheek. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. We'll even put and say, uh, and say Phil and Alexa yeah, sent yeah. this your our, way. Our our prop bet will actually be cheek kiss instead of hug or kiss. It'll be cheek kiss yeah, because that's what you told us you were gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so Wendell, you had said before we went live, you had said, so are we gonna do like some sort of power ranking or something like that? Here's what I want to know from you. We won't do like an entire power ranking because you know we'll. We'll give ourselves some time. Alexa and I are always so wrong. We got to be right. And Dom was Dom and Alexa both did better than me this week. They had Elizabeth at twelve. I had Elizabeth at ten. But what are you thinking? And we've talked a lot about the six person alliance. But what are you thinking is going to kind of go down for the rest of this game? Who are you feeling is going to be your winner? Maybe final three. What what's your what's your gut telling you right now? Who? Um, <laughs> You're on the spot here. Yeah, I'm on the spot. So as we've said, we have. We've got a lot of players that look like strong players that can get to the end and win. But then we have players that seem like they're playing kind of like low under the radar. And if they get to the end, they can make a case for themselves. So, like I said, my winner pick was Nick. I want Davey to win. Um, but looking at the way things are panning out now, um, and I love watching Christian, but we all know – Logical people won't let him get to the end, even though people said that about me during my season. Mm -hmm. um, Good point. Man, I'm going to – I guess I'll stick with my winner pick, Nick. Mm -hmm. if, if this 
if this six that we've been kind of scrutinizing can really um, do what we kind of said, get rid of um, maybe another another David, and then start chopping away at some Goliaths. If this six can do that, Nick is smart enough to get rid of Christian before mm -hmm. bringing him far in the game. I think Nick has a good shot at winning it amongst the other five in that top six. So amongst Allison, Gabby, Mike, and Alec, I still think my buddy Nick can do it. Mm -hmm. And Bryce loves Nick. He calls him Nicklicious. <laughs> I like that he has a nickname for everybody. That's I fantastic. love it. What, what was uh, Angelina's? What like the Tomb Raider? I, I love it. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. I love it. I, I you know it's a shame that we only got Bryce for a couple episodes in Kaguya because like yeah. we needed we needed him to to get nicknames for for these maniacs that he played with on his season. What'd you say? What, what'd you say, Phil? It's a shame we only got Bryce for three episodes in Kagaya. <laughs> 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 he said it's a shame. Oh, it's a damn shame. <laughs> hey, I was giving Bryce a compliment, and you're you're, you're throwing oh, me under the bus. You. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, no, I I. I, I forget where I was even at. I'm not going to pretend no, I know. Well, but we're in too deep. You know what? We I agree with you on Nick. How how we yeah how we think people are going to fall. I said I I still I still have faith in my in my guy Nick. Nick Davy, Uncle Carl. Are, 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 <laughs> I Nick like Davey Uncle Carl and, and Uncle Carl. That's Uncle so Carl. cute. I love it. Um, <laughs> I feel like see here's what I think. I think Davy and Carl fall just short. I think Carl ends up going like. Eight, nine, somewhere in there. He plays his nullifier and then he goes not too long after because like, damn, this guy can play. He's got a good strong case. I think that somebody like Dan, I think, is going to last a little bit longer than we think, but then then get the rug pulled out from under him. But I don't think he's gonna be like the next Goliath to go. I think he's gonna last a little bit longer. My preseason winner pick was Gabby. And I know we've seen her crying a lot, but we've also seen her being right a lot. And I, Alex, I know I say this all the time on the podcast where it's like, who's right? Who's being shown as like the person who's right? And right now, Angelina is being shown as wrong. And Dan is kind of getting like a wrong edit. But I feel like Gabby has still been right in a lot of the things she's saying. Like her, her whole call to arms tonight, I feel like is going to come to fruition. And I, I still think she can win it. Granted, I think she has to sit against the right people. I don't know if she would beat a Nick because I, I agree with you, Wendell. I think Nick, since that first episode, he's been nothing but on the rise. Um, his stupid little nicknames, uh, whatever, whatever you want to say about him, but he's been on the rise. Yeah, what, Wendell, what are your thoughts on the nicknames? The nicknames, these alliance names are terrible. Yeah. They're awful. It's brilliant that he's – why Why didn't everyone think about naming alliances? It's like – Apparently like, it's a Big Brother thing. I don't watch Big Brother, uh, but apparently yeah, it's very right. popular that's there. Right. That's right. I think but, it's yeah. yeah. All the, yes, Mason Dixon's that's a terrible that's, name. No, that's the third, the, the thoroughbreds, name. less we forget. Thoroughbreds and the rock stars. Whatever. The fact that he thought about naming them all, it like, it truly puts like a stamp of approval or a stamp right. of or something on there. It uh, that's it makes nice it something more right. tangible. Yeah. So it's like, hey, hey, remember where the mm -hmm. the rock stars. It's like. Yeah. It's. I think it's a great idea, and even it's like a great like you could just fall back on the fact that, dude, come on, Mike, you know we're the rock stars. Let's do this, Christian. Come on, Mason Dixon, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like what would you name you with Dom's alliance? I don't know. We had a it. Nothing sounded cool with me and Dom. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, when did Nick or so? I don't know. <laughs> when when did Nick? There it is. Domino would have sounded really cool. Domino. Yeah, I like that. Oh that sounds like God. 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 We need a celebrity couple name. Uh, I like Wonder Nick. Wonder Nick. That yeah, sounds like a turn. twist on like Wonder Bread or something. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you though. I think that it has worked for him. I mean, you have these people. Look, his his alliance, three people in his alliance. It's him and two other people like that. He has named alliances with. It's working. It, it really is. And you know, I do think though. I think he came across a little slimy at the beginning, but I don't think Nick is a, like a really slimy guy. And I think that that persona kind of went away. I think he became more of his natural self as this game started to progress. And I don't get much into edgic and I don't know a lot of the terms and whatnot, but if I'm really starting to think about it, you say he started out kind of slimy and mm -hmm. like he's shedding that. And it's like, he almost does have some kind of an arc and mm -hmm. they also have focused and shown all of these names of his alliances. It's like we're seeing these things, maybe for something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. that's 
maybe that's a pitch in his final travel. Like, hey, like, why are we seeing these things? Yeah, absolutely. And and Alexa, your preseason winner pick was Allison, right? Or who was your preseason winner pick? My, mine was Allison, which I was not confident in, and now she very well could. But I I think like, and I kind of like what you said, Wendell. I don't want to look too much into the edit, and I don't know what any of the edic uh, acronyms mean. Um, I don't think like at the end of the day, she can as a fan and a viewer, it looks like she could, because I think she's super smart and obviously really good in challenges. And I think they're going to really showcase her ability to manage relationships well. But I think if you just look at how invisible she was at the beginning, that's, that's going to be a pretty it's a killer. Yeah. Yeah. That that's just really tough. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, but I do like, I mean, I like Allison and that's the thing right now. Like, yeah, I feel I like mean, we're going to fall in love with her and then she's going to lose the fire making challenge or something. I mean, and, and I hate that. I hate that. Like, as we get ghost Island people onto this podcast, we always go back to ghost Island as like the bad example of it. But if you look at that season, you have, you have 12 people left in the game and it was like Kellen, Michael, Donovan, Wendell, and Dominic. That was like, it was like five people that you really knew. You didn't know much else. You didn't really know Libby all that well. You didn't know Desiree all that well. And on this season, we have 12 people left. And I feel like, I feel like, like, like here's Bryce over here with all his, his nicknames. And I feel like like they these are earned nicknames. It's not like Purple Chelsea, which is the most obnoxious nickname in the world, but these are like earned nicknames because of either something they've done or something they remind you of or just just anything. Like I feel like it's you know, you, you've gotten to know these people and you know, Allison might have the tenth best chance out of the twelve left, but having the tenth best chance on this season right now is like would maybe be the third or fourth best chance on on the last five seasons. Mm-hmm. As a Survivor fan, I truly enjoy the edit of this season. And as a fan, it's like I'm appreciative that they might have learned their lessons Mm -hmm. based off of Ghost Island. But as a former player (laughs) in Ghost Island, it's like, man, it's like, I thought it was such a, when I got home, I thought it was such a good season. And it's just like, reading this stuff <laughs> online and, and hearing you guys just hearing things it's just like man okay you're Wendell, Wendell, I think Bryce uh I think Bryce yeah. has similar sentiments yeah well <laughs> Bryce, Bryce, has to be Bryce, on. Bryce is it's crazy because Bryce's season was my favorite to watch mm-hmm. right? probably because Bryce it was, was on it right yeah it was probably because Bryce was on it for three, three episodes <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh yeah as a as a player it's like man Okay, Survivor, you think Survivor learned from mm-hmm. the Ghost Island edit how to – this season's edited dope Way and the characters seemed true. dope, you know? Yeah. So I feel yeah. Like we had some good ones. So, yeah, I, I think going forward, I, ho- I hope they continue this trend. And, and, and not for nothing, the boot order on this season is a lot, has been a lot more favorable than yours was. It's just straight up. I mean, if, if you look at that, you're losing people like – Bradley, Brendan, Stephanie Johnson, Morgan, right off the bat, boom, boom, boom. And you lose Stephanie Gonzalez first overall, who like, you know, I, I was at the the pre-finale thing last year and like talking to Stephanie Gonzalez, you're like, man, this is a personality here. Like this is somebody who could have done really well on yeah. this season. Alexa, we went, yeah, I thought she was going to get second place. We went on a fishing <laughs> trip and that was the first time I met her. And I was like, Jesus, she could have been like, like if she started on Navidi, she could have been like, she could have gone very far in the game. I want it. I mean, honestly, yeah. like she could have been somebody who's a threat right. to win the game. I mean, you know, and, and, and on this season, you know, Pat was fun. Jessica's fun. Um, you know, these are, these are, there's fun characters. Natalie Cole is, is amazing. I mean, she is amazing TV. Jeremy is, is for, for as zany as that whole thing was. And as crazy Jeremy as Jeremy was awesome. He was He's awesome. Don't ask crazy. Bryce about him, but he was awesome. Bryce, Great your team. thoughts. Don't ask Bryce about him. <laughs> Don't ask Bryce. Don't yeah, do it. Do it on the next podcast. You yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, yeah. This season, post merge, they have they have some good ones, and mm-hmm. it like even with like getting Bradley out. Mm-hmm. Bradley would almost Killer, be like man. getting a Christian out pre merge. Yeah, because I mean they're 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 different, but they're both like very intelligent, and to watch those gears go post merge that's a that's a scary player i'll tell you what wendell bradley's angelina bradley that's that's what he reminds me of wow. is angelina you know I what could... I mean? he's imagine angelina goes home pre-merge like i kind of thought she was going to go instead of lirsa and and that's bradley's role where if he hits the merge he's going to want things done his way he's used to having them done his way before the merge hit and he's he's that guy who is in his head saying everything's going right 
everything is going exactly according to plan while behind the scenes there's you there's dom going all right yeah sure uh-huh wow. keep going bradley you're doing a great job bradley's angelina straight up you're right yeah think yeah. about it I, <laughs> think hey. about it yeah hey um yeah i don't know i i it's been good though. It's been really good. And hey, it's not just Ghost Island that was edited poorly. I mean, pretty much since Russell Hans came on the scene in Samoa, scenes have or most seasons have just been like, you know, so uneven. And yes, there's still characters who are your main characters, but everybody's getting something this season, and that's that's really all you can ask for. You know, yeah. you, that's really this feels like a season one through ten type edit right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, all right. What what did, did we cut? What have we not covered? What did we cover? I know it's late for you guys. I'm I'm like midnight here, so I'm like ready. You know, I'm like it's almost like, midnight here. Yeah, yeah. I'm like you know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm ready for I'm ready for dinner. I could you know whatever. But um, what what if what, is there anything we didn't touch on? Is there anything that we're missing? Are we Alex? missing anything, Bryce? Did we forget anything? Alexa, you have any you have anything that you were like, damn, I really wish we would have talked about I, I that. I mean, but, I am just wow. so curious about Bryce's thoughts on Jeremy, but I feel like these this is actually not going to be commented on tonight. So we'll yeah. we'll, we'll we're gonna table either. that discussion. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should. Let's let's table that. But um he, no, I I think Sarah, what were you saying? We will table that discussion. Okay. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we if we ever come to it. You guys DM Bryce about that. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! Um, all right, Wendell. Well, then, what do you? What is your like? What's your? Uh, Give us some closing big, thoughts here. Yeah, let's get some closing thoughts from Wendell. <clears throat> some hot takes. Give us a spicy take. Something spicy hotter than what? Take. Um, hotter spicy than take. Davy's gonna win it all. There it is. <laughs> you are. You heard you it here first. Like that, man. You root like it's like you. I met Davy. I talked to him a lot. I met him, so he's my friend and. In watching it, you're no, like, not friend, take friend out of it. No friend. No, that's this is thing. a wild <laughs> bias we have here. That's the thing. Now I'm biased because he's my friend, and I you watch know. him, and he has an idol. So you want, you're like, nah, he could still pull it off. Yeah, yeah Davey, go. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. As a viewer, as a viewer, what would you say? Like, what's your chances of Davey winning? Yeah, as a viewer, um, not so you much. You don't know, but you don't know yet, though. I'd put him in like the second tier of like second tier? to win. Yeah. Of, of just of likelihood to win, not like who I want, just in terms of right, as right. you're likely. He's like five to eight for me. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. I think there's like right. Are win. his watch like parties fun? The first, the first one was fun. Um, the, actually, both were fun. The first one, there were a lot more people, but it was it was weird because the yeah, Bryce was there. The uh, <laughs> the sound quality wasn't so good. But we made it work. We made it work, but uh. How was your first viewing party? My first, I was going to say my first <laughs> viewing party, the sound quality wasn't so good. So <laughs> oh, no. you know, it's going to get better. And it That's got Philly, better. man. Yeah. That's Philly. You know, it's just got to. <laughs> oh, I didn't even consider the sound quality of these watch parties. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just well, kidding. Well, I will say Davey's in Atlanta. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. He's not even in Philly. God. Yeah, come on, that. Phil. You know, pay attention. Go, I go to this. I love going back to the East Coast because the bars in Philly are so much more fun than the bars in uh, in LA. Seriously, they're so much more fun. But all the bars in Philly are so old. So you know that's what that's that was me. Uh, what I was saying. Come, come on, come back yeah. out here, Phil. Come yeah, on Phil, move to the here. East Coast. Yeah. And make it a little yeah, easier. Yeah, I gotta get over there. So um, my final take is, I I I met Nick uh, two times, and I thought like out of the you know five or seven people from this cast that I met, I was like, man, Nick. Nick might might have it. Humble dude. He's an attorney. He can talk to people. So and I'm still still he's in a good position. So I'm still I'm still going with that winner pick. Okay. My I first like time it. really having a real winner pick. I've never, you know, I've never done that before. I've just watched and wanted people to win. But now I'm like thinking like who I think can really win. I'm still well now you now you have some clout, Wendell. Like, everyone's gonna everyone's I'm, gonna take you very yeah. seriously. Wait. I'm still going with my boy Nick Licious. <laughs> Nick Licious <laughs> and, and, and Wendell, Uncle Carl. Know, Uncle Carl. Wendell, do you know who Alexa's winner pick was from last season? I absolutely know who Alexa's winner pick was. I can't remember okay. Phil. Do you know? Do you remember who it was Phil? I, I remember who it was. I was. I was. Uh, I was stuck between Brendan and Dom, but Alexa <laughs> over there had had Wendell himself. So. You know, she she got on the winning streak there. There so. it is. She's feeling good about herself. Thank I you, might. Alexa. Yeah, my ego is through the roof. <laughs> 
I thought you were too. I thought you were too likable. Man. <laughs> too likable. Did you hear my Alexa start talking to me? She just gets tri- my Alexa gets super tricky. Yeah. I close the door. <laughs> That's funny, but yeah. Um, all right, well, Dom, th- or Dom, oh my oh, God. I'm going I was gonna talk to you about that because I know that I wasn't your favorite on my season, but I was just gonna let it go, man. We could keep it. No, we could keep no. It cool, Bill. Oh, Wendell, like no, Wendell. Wendell. Wendell, rip me apart, but you know, I, I thought before the season you were gonna be too likable. There was no way that they'd be dumb enough to let you get to the end. That's the truth, though. That's the truth. Like, Brendan, I felt like had a better chance to get to the end than you did before the season started. Like I, I, there was red flags all over you, and they still said, "Come on, Wendell, come sit down next to us." And it, it worked. I mean, hey, after talking to you right now, Wendell, I'm like, there. I get it, I get it, I get, I get it. You've you've brainwashed me. I'm 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 all in. I got to go back and you know. I'm, no, I'm I, gonna uh, keep it real. I'm gonna keep it real PC on your podcast, Phil. But when I see when I come to LA, you know I'll be there for the finale. I'm gonna come mm. see you. We're gonna have we're gonna have some conversations, my man. You're gonna be. This is what happens though when you meet Bradley and you think Bradley's going to win the game. Because I I met Bradley. He was like the first survivor I'd ever met before he played Survivor. So I was feeling real good about myself. And I was like, yes, Bradley's gonna pull this out. Woohoo! We got a great interview. And he's a great interview. He he also doesn't. He he didn't know what he was doing the first time. So so when I'm looking at that, I was like, well, I like him. Brendan likes us. I like Brendan. Sounds good to me. You know, whoever tweets at us preseason, we assume is gonna win. That's that's it. I'll be honest. with you. <laughs> yeah. Dan, Dan like tagged us in something and I was like, oh, I love Dan. Oh Dan's the man. Dan win it all. <laughs> what I will yeah. say, guys, I wasn't big on podcasts before my season. And then I now I'm I'm big on podcasts, you know, and I always listen to you guys. I, I always watch your YouTubes actually. Um mm-hmm. not not usually live, but I did see you guys when uh when Dom was on. I had to I jumped in like an hour in and I was I was making some comments in the YouTube. I saw the chat. Yeah. We're loving it. I was making a little we comments. Can... But you guys have a great podcast. I do love watching you guys. Oh, we appreciate that. That, yeah. that see that makes that makes us feel so good. We keep blushing. Like yeah. your cast is, so, so is you guys are so nice. Yeah, Phil, you didn't pick one to the win, and now he's complimenting us. That's the only no. reason why I won, because I was on a nice cast, you know? It was a bunch of nice people, you know? Yeah. So, that's what it was. That's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So and I hey, I those guys, um like I, I said this before, Dom Dom can win a lot of seasons, you know. Um mm-hmm. he's not he's not ever gonna beat me, but he can win a lot of seasons. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nah, I had to throw that in there. But um of course. but not nah, like I I love Dom, but um, you know he was going against I, Wendell. There's a there's a difference here. Dom Dom and and I think Dom would agree with this. So I feel like I can say this pretty confidently. Dom has to sit next to the right people, whereas I feel like you could probably sit next to most people. And I think that there's a difference there. And I think I think there's that's why I was shocked that you made it to the end in your season and why you weren't my pregame winner pick because. You know, me and Adam Klein talk about it all the time. I'll, I'll text him sometimes and be like, who's your winner pick for the season? And with you, it was you're too obvious. Like, you're, you're yeah. too obvious. And, and that's why, that's why like, Dom needs the right people. Tony Vlachos needs the right people. You could sit down against anybody and win, like Christian right now. Yeah. And I, I even understand that. And even walking into the game, people were like, yo, you're good. And even when I got home and I didn't tell anybody about what happened, people were like, yo, we know X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. And it's like they know me. If I if I get that far, I mm-hmm. I, I I would have a good shot, you know. Yeah. Um, but- what was it like going into at like filming's over? This is as a viewer going into these the last couple weeks of your season, knowing it ends the way it ends, and everyone's saying like, "Oh, it's you," or "Oh, it's dumb," and I I I don't know. What do you think? Like, okay. I know what's gonna happen, and you you know it's going to be a tie like how do you how do you sit on that that i can't even it was like a snowball effect because first of all i came in with some momentum i was jeff's pick i might have been van wagnon's pick Mm -hmm. and like a lot of people were rooting for me but then the beginning of the season they're like um you know wendell wendell's wendell's all right and he's gonna do all right but dom is very visible and very loud and outspoken but then like Every week with every watch party, it would get bigger and bigger, and people would be like, "Yo, you're you're gonna do this. You're gonna pull it off." And I'm like, you know, I don't know what happens. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. And then, like 
at the last watch party, there are like lines to take pictures with me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Like, who the hell do I think I am? Yeah, you pictures with Bryce? Was yeah, uh, some people took pictures with Bryce, I think, right? <laughs> I think, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but uh, it, it was, it was, it was, it was surreal. It was awesome. And knowing that it ended in a tie, I'm like, man, people online are tripping about this season being boring and predictable. But wait till the end. Wait till the end. Wait till the end. And yes, that end was awesome. It was dope. But still, it's like overshadowed by the fact that it was kind of predictable and blah, blah, blah. But uh, for me, it was awesome. And I just, I wish I could have seen the live audience react and my family react when it was a tie vote. I couldn't see that because we were back. Oh my God, your family too? Yeah. Oh. So, so Wendell, we didn't ask Dom this and I really regret it now because you're sitting here and, and you're talking about this and you're so excited. When that, when Jeff went to read those votes, and we've heard this from jury members, we haven't heard this from one of the people sitting in the final three. When Jeff went to read those votes and you're sitting there and, and at this final traveling, you're going, why is he about to read those? What was like going through your head in that moment? Because Kellen gave her input on what she thought was going through your head, but like what was actually going on in your head at that moment? So at the uh, what was it was it the game changers finale when he said a tie vote um, the third person is the tie breaking vote right I mm -hmm. think he announced that then so as a big fan you know that in the event of a tie that's that's gonna happen so as he's reading them I'm like all right this is a tie and oh. and in my head I'm like Laurel is about <laughs> to be the tie breaking vote so you probably see it I'm like covering my face. And I'm like, I have a big smile. My eyes are watering a little bit. And uh, Dom, he was feeling a little confident, but there was a point when he kind of like glanced at me or something. He realized how, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, excited I was. But I was trying to control it because even like my whole game was to try to be humble and mm -hmm. not, you know. So even at that point, I was like covering my smile and my face. But I was just like, I can't believe it. I can't, mm -hmm. I, I was almost like, I just stole a million dollars. I was like, <laughs> you walk into final, that last day when you're doing your interviews and your confessionals, you walk away from those interviews shook, man. Mm -hmm. Dom walked away, he was like, man, I'm a lot more nervous than I thought. Mm -hmm. And I walked away the same thing. And we were like comforting each other. There's a photo of him, Laurel and myself on like a log holding each other. Like, mm -hmm. hey, whatever happens, we love each other, right? And so, I, I knew the things that I wanted to convey. A lot of the stuff wasn't even shown at Final Tribal um, on TV, but I knew what I wanted to convey. And then I knew that Dom said some things that kind of like hurt me a little bit. Like mm -hmm. something, and Michael said something, something like this show is about, it's not about building furniture. It's <laughs> about, you know, strategizing or something. And I'm just yeah. like, ow, mm -hmm. I did that for you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Last time I built a bench for you. You can sleep on the floor, Michael. <laughs> yeah. So, but then for him to come out and say, "I'm, I'm gonna read the votes," I was like, "We're all like, ah, oh, he's joking, right?" Because probes will joke and know that it's gonna get edited out. Mm -hmm. He'll say something. He, he might even use some profanity and just know that it's gonna get edited out. So he'll joke, and we're like, "Oh, he's joking to lighten the mood because it's it was tense. You could cut the tension with a knife." And then he starts reading the votes. <laughs> yeah. At the front, no, he didn't say any jokes uh, at Final Travel. But, no. but when he says, I'm like, the vote, I was like, he's joking. And then he starts reading them. I'm like, oh my God, it's a tie. Laurel got me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's, and like, that's what Kellen was saying. She said, in that moment, you could see Wendell knew he won, Dom knew he lost, and Laurel realized she was about to make Dominic lose. <laughs> like, like, it wasn't so much, I'm going to let. Wendell win and this feels good. It was oh crap! I am taking a million dollars and handing it to you, but pulling it out of this man's hands. Yeah, you know what was strange? Um, I noticed that on the parchment it had like two hearts and an underline on it. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know it was a super difficult decision for Laurel because her and Dom slept next to each other every night by the fire, um, and they were very close. But um, we we did have like a true family, like brother sister relationship out there, and I did so much for her. She did so much for me that wasn't shown. Um, but man, 
it 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 felt very good to know that she was that tie breaking vote. That's, <laughs> oh my goodness. That's yeah, that's I can't that's even insane. imagine. That's I like I like how we were like three seconds away from wrapping it up. And now like now my no, blood pretty, pressure's up. I'm ready to like go run a marathon now, dude. That's I like know. I don't know. That's just it's one of those things where like as a huge fan of this, being a huge fan since I was a little kid, I mean seeing that i told alexa i was like i blacked out like like i really did like i was sitting on the couch and i was like like i had that moment of like everything that you know i always call it the roy shader jaw shot where you know he realizes that the, there's a shark in the water and it's just like everything zooms on him that's what i felt like i was like oh my god i'm about to tip over like i and i wasn't there like i, I felt like a goober because i'm sitting at home i'm like this isn't this had nothing to do with me <laughs> it was so weird. yeah it was a lot. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember what, I mean, they cut to the live audience, but like Phil said, I I blacked out. So I, I have no idea what happened. A good video. And I'm sure Phil, you've seen it on Adam Klein's Instagram. He, rec so I guess Jay or someone was recording him. Oh yes, him, I've seen that. And he was like in shock. And yeah. he was like, oh my God, Wendell's idol play is about to get him a million dollars. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's a cool video to watch. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yep. No, I've seen that. Yeah, that's it's it's just I don't know. It's it's that type of stuff, man. I, it, it was it was just awesome. And yeah, for as it's it's one of those where I don't think that it's overshadowed by the rest of the season. I think that your season is now the season where there was a tie. And I think that's what it'll be remembered as. And I think that that's better to be remembered as than Thailand or or Fiji, where it's just kind of remembered as the that season. You know, like this is the season that. It's it's remembered as the one that had that insane insane ending like that. You'll say to people, you got to watch this because you need to see how it ends. Yeah, I think and hope that that's what's going to happen. I mean, yeah, people are salty that they say it was predictable and all that, but I I truly think that as time progresses, it's going to be like, yo, this was a dope. Y'all y'all need to see how this thing pans out. Yeah, I think it might have been Phil who made this point after we both like sufficiently blacked out after the finale. <laughs> Phil was like, yeah, maybe it was predictable, but who predicted a tie? Exactly. Yeah, we, people predicted the end, but who could have called that it would end the way it did? So yeah. I think it made up for anything. Yeah. Thanks, Alexa. There you go. Oh, Alexa, Alexa gets to thank you. I'm over here getting that. I'm going to fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah we're going to. Yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm ready oh, for the I'm finale. I'm, I, I I'm, coming, be I'm coming with my boxing gloves on. I'm, I'm ready. I don't care. <laughs> all right. I think, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll no, beat the crowd. I love you, Phil. No, I, I really do. Like I said, you guys have a, a great podcast. Well, we appreciate it, and we, we like having all of you guys on. So it, it's just yeah. such a good. It, it's fun, and I I know Bryce has been annoying the crap out of you, but having Bryce there, man, that's it's been fun. You know, like, it's, it's fun to see. Great, but, but right. yeah. If you guys want a third boot, you know, you can feel free. <laughs> it, we, he was on ah, like ten seasons before me. You guys can call this is. guy. This we've never care. had a third boot. I don't before, think we've right? ever had so, a third boot. Yeah. So Bryce would really be a trailblazer for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're um, gonna let you on because they've never had a third boot. Wait, was Brendan a third boot? No, Morgan was a third boot. Brendan was fourth. Yeah, we need a third boot. We gotta create like our own survivor specialist uh like Checklist? season. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got, we have two winners now. You're our second winner. The only other winner we've had is Adam. So so you're actually the second winner that you know we had a little lull there. We didn't. We couldn't pull Sarah and we couldn't pull uh, Ben, but uh, but here you are. So we need, a, right. third, we need a third boot. Uh, if, <laughs> hey, if you if you need me to make any calls for you guys, you know I'll vouch for you. There you go. Well, we appreciate that too. God, this is this is turning gushy. We're, we're normally very mean to each other on this show, Wendell. No, this is this. Can just say all these nice things to us, so we can stop blushing. On I don't I don't like Wendell being nice to us. You know I don't I don't <laughs> like this. Yeah. Me That's what did it, my man. That's what did it. I know you're turning me into a better person. This is baloney. I don't yeah, like it. being nice and feels really mean, so you could use this. Yeah, I need. I need. I'm heartless, man. I thought Bradley was the nicest guy in your season. You know oh. I. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Well, that's oh. good. Uh, real quick about Bradley, like that's good that he didn't let you believe anything. Nothing. I mean, other, yeah, that's yeah. I like that. I'll tell you what, man. Bradley, I met him. I guess it was like you know two or three weeks before they even announced the cast, and he didn't let me in on anything, nothing. And you know, like he tweeted at us a couple times, but like never once did he tell me anything. And when it ended up being a tie at the end. I just texted him. I was like, "Dude, are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> Sorry, there's my curse on the on the pocket. But that was literally what I had. And obviously, he was in the green room with you, so he obviously didn't text me back. But in my head, 
I mean, I was just like, here's the crazy part. I was with all of you guys the night before. I talked to almost every single one of yeah. you the night before. Not one person hinted at it. I mean, I talked to Dom and he was like, dude, like, it's going to be a good episode. And I was like, that's all I got. Like, yeah. nobody gave anything. Your cast was amazing with that. Before probes disappeared, he was like, guys, he said something like, guys, this is special. Let, let's keep it secret mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And everyone sure. thankfully stuck to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, now I dropped an F bomb. Now we're now no, now we're done. Ooh, Phil, you are frozen. I oh. cut out. There you I are. Cut out. I cut out. I saw you guys freeze, and I was sitting here like. Mm. But Wendell, do you have anything else that you want to say, or Alexa, do you want to take us home? I mean, it's up to you guys. I'm you got it, Alexa. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate Thanks, you. Thanks, Wendell. Thank you, Wendell. Um, so we'll be back probably on Saturday or Sunday with our episode eight, nine. I don't even know anymore. Predictions. Mm -hmm. um, I do not think we can top the duo of guests that we had this week. So TBD on what we're doing there. Um, we had a ton of fun tonight. Make sure to follow both Wendell and Bryce on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the whole shebang. Uh, make sure to follow us too. We are still steadily growing on YouTube. We are almost at 3,900 YouTube subscribers, which is super exciting. Um, and thank you so much, both of you guys. We had a ton of fun tonight. We had a ton of fun you. recapping this merge, and we'll be back this weekend. All right. See you guys. See you.